In the previous tutorial, we implemented panning across of a zoomed in image, but it had issues to say the least. In this tutorial, we hope to resolve the biggest issues that we found in the previous tutorial. So from the previous tutorial, if we zoom in and we go to pan across, you will see that it keeps jittering and it keeps going back to a previous location. It's not saving the last location that I pressed for my finger. So that, that's the main issue. When you take your finger off, the last location of where your finger is is not saved, so you've got... That, the application's got no memory, so it sort of goes back to a default location for your panning. So first thing we have to resolve here is just to save the previous translate value, so we can move on from there. Okay, so just as we mentioned, we need to save the previous translate values. So to do that, we're going to have to add two more members. So let me just copy these last two lines here okay and I'll call it previous translate X and previous translate Y okay so I've got those extra members now let's go into the O on touch overridden event here and so action up represents when you take your finger off that's where we want to save the value for our pinch zoom and then we'll put that back value back in there when we put the finger down just to start panning from that last previous value so I go into action up just here okay so let's go to the previous translate x and give it the tra current translate x value and we'll do the same for y Okay, now set up those two values, and so we're now saving them. Now we need to factor in those values when we press our finger back down on the display again. So we'll do this in the action down part of the touch event. So we just subtract the um, previous x. And we'll do the same here for m previous y. And that should be it. So let's just try running that to see if this fix works for this particular issue. Okay, let's record this so you can see what's happening. Okay, let's zoom in. See, we've still got the white space there. We'll look at that issue next. So that's, okay, much more manageable here because we're now saving the previous values of when we take a finger off. We're saving those values so we can move on the panning from those previous translate values. So that particular issue is now resolved. And the next issue, and we actually saw that on the screen here, was we're actually panning out of the view itself onto just the plain canvas. So we want to set limits there. We want to basically set the X and Y points in the top left-hand corner as zero, which represents the top corner of our um, device screen. And for the bottom right-hand side corner, we want to set that at the bottom of the display. So of the bitmap, so the bottom of the bitmap matches the bottom of the display. So we want to enforce those changes so we don't scroll right off or pan right off the image. Okay, so we'll implement that in the on draw. And basically we've got to do a check to see if our um, translate X and translate Y values go off the scale of the image. 
Okay, so let's focus on the top left hand corner first. So basically, we don't want the um, panning coordinates translate x, y to go under zero basically. So let's do a check for that. We'll start with um, x first. So I need to get the translate value here and I will need to multiply that by minus one just to fit in with the calculations here. And we just want to check to see if this value is smaller than zero, which represents the furthest left-hand side of our display screen and our image. So if it's smaller than zero, we will set that to zero. So we'll reset it to zero so we don't go any further so you don't see the white space. Okay, so while we're here, let's do the right-hand side as well. So when we zoom right across, we don't want to, the translate x value to be any bigger than the maximum size of the image and take away the actual display screen size as well because we've got to factor in the display screen size. We'll do put in the else here. And again... We'll use the M translate X value. So we, this time we want to check it to see if it's bigger than, and it's going to be a scaled bitmap. So it's, we'll use the image width times the scale. So we've got the right limit of that. Now we factor in our display. And to factor in the display, we can actually just call get width of the display of our image view here and that will give us the maximum uh, translate x value that we want to move across okay so if it's bigger than this value we will actually set m translate x equal to that value Minus the get width is the value. And let me just put brackets around that because I'm going to have to set this translate value as a minus number here. Okay, so that should work fine for x. Let's do the same for y. Okay, I've got a little error here. Let's fix that. So we need to add it if here, basically. Okay, so we'll do the same thing for y and change the x values of y. Move down here. And in this case, we're going to change the width to the height. And we'll change translate x, it's going to be what translate y. Just double check that this is okay. Okay, so let's run this and see if we only pan across the display itself. Let's record this so you can see what's going on. Okay, select on the Raman. I'll press now, zoom in. Now let's go scrolling. Okay. I can't go any further. Okay, so that seems to work. Let's go across the right. Can't go any further. Let's go down. Okay, so that now works. I'm only scrolling to the actual limits of the display itself. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. Basically, in the previous tutorial, we learned how to set up listeners for the 
panning and do the calculations for panning. We did have issues at the end of that tutorial, basically ran out of time. So we um, resolved the two major issues here. One was we have to remember to save the position of when we lift our finger up if we're panning in case we want to do another pan or several pans. So we resolved that issue. Another issue was we were actually panning right off the bitmap itself. So we had to set limits for that by factoring in our display view in regards of a zoomed in image. And so we resolved those two issues. I'm not going to do any more tutorials on pinching and zooming. I'm going to stop here. Um, it can get quite advanced and um, be quite time consuming with the mathematics involved. Um, as I said, if you want a polished solution, I do recommend having a look at some of the Android libraries out there. I haven't actually investigated any myself just yet, so I might not be the right person to ask about this at this moment in time. So yeah, we'll um, conclude the pinch zoom part of it, but we'll continue with the development of our Android Image Viewer application. And that's it for this one. So if you want to get notified of the further tutorials, episodes to this tutorial series or any of the other tutorial series I'm working on, don't forget to click on the subscribe button down below. And if you want to get up to date with the, uh, all the news and happenings in the world of mobile application tutorials, surrounding me is all my social media accounts, so feel free to visit those. And don't forget, just directly above me is a link to my website as well. And each one of these tutorials, I do put together an article that matches these tutorials. So not only do you get the video for these tutorials, you also get explanations of the code changes and um, the uh, details of where you can actually get the code changes from GitHub as well. Anyway, that's it for this one. Bye for now.